Welcome back, ZRK fans, to Nanaliza Don. Donner, Man, your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another match. Flipstep versus Izzeride. Flipstep on Shields. Izzeride on Shields as well on Trojan Hills, because Shields is the meta. So, yeah. Lots of Shields. Both players starting out with the fair... Oh, sorry. Izzeride starting with a fairly aggressive opening. Starting out with several bandits, actually. Sorry, Flipstep starting with several bandits. Izzeride starting out with constructors. Getting convicts right off the bat. Want to make sure they get their economy going very quickly, and whoa, do they want to get their economy going very quickly. That is a lot of wind generators. That is a lot more wind generators than I would have expected, but okay, we are going to be going with a lot of wind generators today. Which makes sense. 1.6, actually, yeah, it's very valuable here. I mean, you generally do want to go for wind generators on Trojan Hills. The only thing you don't want to necessarily do is go for wind generators in a way that's unsafe. But it looks like the idea from Izzeride's side is just build so many of them that even if raiders come and wipe out a bunch of the wind farm, there's still a lot more wind farm available to keep going. So you're probably going to be fine. Which, interesting strategy if that's what it is. But at the same time, Izzeride very quickly getting to the defenses up just in time. I like that. Now they have their economy going fairly quickly. Flipstep, they had to just start getting into that economy now. They've only just now gotten into first convict. And they haven't really built up a whole lot in the way of metal extractors, but in Izzeride's case, they've got their commander going forward, already setting up for probably this ridge. They've got their... they got this early bandits already set up. And they have, obviously, the wind generator farm being built up rapidly. So Izzeride's economy is considerably stronger than Flipstip's, and they just barely have the defenses needed to keep it in place. So, a bit of a gamble on Izzeride's part, but certainly has worked out in terms of timing. So I respect that. It's very well done there. On the other hand, Flipstip, they are getting themselves caught up. They are setting up very explicitly for that ridge over to the northwest. While at the same time, he's a ride coming in. It's doing okay. I mean, they're dealing with the bandit as it comes, so it's not really a huge concern. I mean, Izzeride's commander is, of course, not going to be trifled with. I mean, they've got a Lotus basically built into them. So there's no easy way to actually deal with that for the bandits. Same time, though, no bandits were here to protect this convict. However, the convict shields last long enough for the Savior Bandits to come in and actually take it out. The bandits actually run around. No, 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 no. Who's right? You forgot to get your bandits in there. Okay, that has got to suck. At the very least, the convict able to escape just barely. Its shields able to kite well enough to stop the bandits from killing it. But wow, that was close. That was way too close. So, he's a ride, at the very least, did not lose a convict. And that is the most important thing. They lost a bit of timing when it came to building up their economy, but they're already way ahead of Flipstip that it does not matter. The important thing right now is that Izzeride has a living convict, and Flipstip has not been able to harass us by the fact that they've been playing this entire game raid-based. Izzeride's defense has been entirely on point. It's actually pretty cool to watch. Like, just how on point this defense is. But Flipstep, on the other hand, they are going out to deal with their own defense right now. They have Rogue set up, they have the Commander obviously set up, and with the, heavy, the light particle beam as well, which is a great choice for dealing with shield butts. The only thing I'm not sure about is what is going to happen if any flanks happen. I mean, we have a Lotus being built up, and we have a couple bandits set up already. But Izzeride essentially has naked expansions all around that they could just take out. I mean, the main base is practically naked. This ridge expansion is nearly naked. There's not A one Lotus defense force is not going to be all that much. But Izzeride seems a lot more focused on getting their economy going as quickly as possible, and to that end, they have done an extremely good job. I mean, the wind farm is just continually going and going and going, and Izzeride is not going to e-stall unless that gets hit. Like, short of Flipstep actually managing to get a raid in here and deal some damage, this wind farm is fine. At the same time, Flipstep is at least managing to get a little bit of damage done in Izzeride's ridge expansion. So, Izzeride's commander, a little bit at risk. Izzeride's radar tower is not... Going to be able to turn to a spare if I wanted to. I mean, I know if it will, but can't. And the rest of the stuff is still going to be just going as it is. So overall, Izzeride's still way ahead, but they are starting to find a bit of friction. Flipstip is managing to at least slow down some of their expansions. But again, same time coming in here, there's that bandit, there's that dead metal extractor, but the, then again, the convict did survive. So, props to that. At the very least, Flipstiff is not losing too much momentum. They're taking a little while to catch up, but they're also making sure Izzeride cannot move much farther forward. I mean, two rogues against a commander. It is going to be the rogues winning every time. That's why the commander is holding back. That's why we aren't seeing all that much being done here, because that's just how it goes. And at the same time, we have Izzeride coming in here doing 
fair bit of damage, or trying to at least... At least trying to hold the center of the map, which is what they need. I mean, they have several more metal extractors they could take. But then again, Flipstiff now starting to skulk over in the southwest side of the map. And there's no defenses. This this actually, if, my, if it's ignored, this convict is going to go down. And that's going to completely shut down the expansions. Ezeride losing this convict to basically no resistance. Finally turning it back, but after the shields have been destroyed, that convict is going to go down. And that is the most important thing. That convict dying means the expansion attempt over to the north side of the map has been completely halted for the time being. Possibly for the rest of the game. While at the same time, the Eastern expansion has also been halted, or at least considerably slowed down. The rogues coming in here from Izzerite are going to help. And the bandits won't be able to get past the Lotus Wall over to the north side. So, this is still Izzerite's domain, but they're being contained. I mean, again, this northwest side it was going to be expanded to. It's going to be another minute and a half before Izzerite's able to get any forces into the northwest side of the map. Which means there is no way Izzerite is going to be able to get their expansion momentum going. As Flipstiff finally starts taking that map, starts getting a pretty strong presence. Getting, no, 27 metal per second. Or starting to get an advantage, I should say. For the first time in the game, Flipstip has the advantage economically because they've been able to stop Izzeride's expansions, and Izzeride has not been raiding out Flipstip this entire time. I mean, they tried a little bit with the bandits here, but there was nothing going around the back. There was nothing going around to try to stop any convicts. There was nothing going around to try to make sure that the front lines are being contained. I mean, Izzeride... They've been playing a fine defense, but turning into an offense is going to be a thing they have to do right now. Like, this is the timing point because Flipstip is going to get the advantage when it comes to their economy. Currently, Izzerite has the advantage when it comes to attrition. So, Flipstip likely has the disadvantage when it comes to army value. But the thing is, army value is only relevant where it's positioned. And at these level, at this, this number of units, it's also more in terms of what types are there and what position. Like, how you use them, I should say. That being said, Izzerite's commander should be able to deal some threat over to the rest of the stuff here, get that ridge going. But again, Flips up already taken their ridge. They've taken the center. They've made sure Izzerite has to wait a minute and a half before they're able to take the northwest. Izzerite is not doing well. They're managing to get back into this, but remember, they had the advantage going into this game. They had a very strong advantage starting out, and now they're having a tough time finding any real momentum beyond that. Not to mention... Flipstip's defenses are actually doing pretty well, too. And they have a, a proxy gunship plant, because why not? But yeah, the Faraday here, making sure nothing can really get in, because, I mean, Faraday is always the great choice against shields. Although, that... Ooh, that snitch actually could be a problem. If that snitch gets hit by something, I mean, possibly not the outlaw, but if anything randomly hits that, a rogue shot goes wild or whatever, that could blow up a lot of Flipstip's base. This is really risky. Or it's going to go and be used well. I mean, you know, obviously that's an option too. Actually, that that is an option. That is a possibly very good option. I mean, Izzerite does see it, but I don't think they'll be able to stop it. Oh, do they see it? No, it doesn't look like it, actually. They did not see that at all. That went past right line of sight. Nicely done, Flipstip. So well-positioned sn snitch right there is Izzerite... Becoming more and more desperate to try to get their economy back on track. As much as they've started out with a really strong start and really strong expansions, Flipstip basically just gambled on raiding as a way of distracting Izzeride from a counter-raiding, allowing Flipstip to expand essentially naked. Because this entire time, Flipstip has been setting up naked expansions and then capping them off with a Lotus. I mean, they wouldn't stand up- ooh, nice, road shot. But yeah, Izzer Flipstip's defenses would not stand up to anything particularly notable in terms of an actual raid, but Izzeride has not been sending any raids. They've been too concerned about being raided themselves to actually send in any counter raids, which means Flipstip has been able to expand without spending resources on defenses, unlike Izzeride, who has been defending quite heavily with all of their expansions. And I mean, it worked out at the beginning, but at this point, it's starting to become less and less effective. Though, to be fair, Izzeride's commander has managed to actually take out the north, the eastern ridge, which is good. A couple more metal extractors. But 15 metal per second behind is a big difference. And on top of that, with the Flipstip Banshees coming in here... Or not Banshees. Locusts. Old name. The Flipstip Locusts coming in here, that is still going to be a bit of a problem. Flipstip's Locusts are... Well, they're webbing on the Northwest Expansion once again. And again, like last time, that is not a great situation to be in. That being said, I think Flipstip might still have a bit of an opening. Again, they've largely been expanding naked, so a solid assault force should still be able to punch through a lot of what they built up. 
And that's, that is exactly what Izzerite seems to be counting on right now. Go in there. I mean, one Lotus at a time, so they can kind of be taken out pretty much without too much concern. I mean, one at a time is a lot easier to take out than a bunch of Lotuses in a row. So he's right actually now providing quite a lot of pressure over the western side of the map, and nothing is really in place to deal with that. The Nimbus is going to try, but I'm honestly kind of doubtful. The Velens get close, the shields actually line up, which they aren't. But if that happens, though, yeah, that Nimbus could go down. Or just get the shields back up so the Nimbus can't really do much damage either way. It's just the problem, of course, that Nimbus is going to be a bit of a... a that's going to be a pain, but I think it'll be fine. The Felons just need to actually get in close with the rest of the shields and actually start sh sh sharing the shield charge, which they aren't doing. I think they're planning to, but it's not being prioritized. Also, I'm not really sure what the point of attacking those Lotuses directly was, but at the very least, it does open things up a little bit for the Vandals to get in and take care of the Nimbus as the rest of the forces retreat. Opening up the entire western side, so that's good. He's right, breaking a little bit of Flipsip's control, taking a lot of their economy, opening a little bit of their reclaim fields. Making those a little less safe as well over in the center of the map. So Izzeride might actually be able to get themselves back on the ground. But then again, there's also the giant force coming in here from Flipstip. Essentially fighting Izzeride on their own terms. And right now, Thuglaw Ball versus Thuglaw Felon Rogue. I still, I kind of put it on Thuglaw Felon Rogue, except for the fact that the Rogues got caught out by the Outlaws. And that is going to destroy them. That means it's just Thuglaw Felon. And considering that the Felon is using all of the shields... Still feels like advantage Flipstip, but Flipstip deciding instead just to regroup, move back, worry about it later, take advantage of what they thought was an economic advantage, which right now actually isn't. Flipstip has lost the economic advantage. Izzerite and Flipstip are just about even when it comes to static economy. Everything's coming down to reclaim at this point. And Izzerite stalls their commander. Izzerite stalls good anti-air. Izzerite has a lot of vandals that have been deployed over the western side of the map, so it's not like Nemesis can really come in there with impunity again. The only thing that needs to happen at this point for Izzerite is to regroup their army. They have two reasonably good armies, or reasonably good squads between the center and the western side of the map. They just need to regroup them. Set them up, tear apart Flipstep forces. If they, if these forces from Izzeride regroup together, Flipstep won't have a chance. The Thug Law Ball here is just gonna die. But the regroup doesn't seem to happen. It's like there's three or four different groups just hanging around each other and one of them is already engaging. That is the first engagement coming in here. And that is the Felon going to be proving just how much it is having a bit of a hard time with those thug shields. And there it goes. Felon down. At this point, Flipstip still has a bit of a disadvantage when it comes to actual firepower. But it's not going to be enough. The Rogues getting torn apart by bandits from Flipstip. Izzerite should at least be able to get rid of the Outlaw before anything goes down. And actually, at the same time, their own Outlaw has been doing a great job getting rid of the thugs. So it's not all lost. In fact, this is going to be a defensive win for Izzeride. Not too much of a loss either as they regroup all these forces and should be able to go in for a counter-assault, probably finishing off the Northern Ridge, to be honest. They get rid of the Convict, and they get rid of everything else, and they could punch that straight into the main base. Now, that being said, it's clear that Flipstep is focusing a lot more on the center of the map than they are on their own main base, but that is still an open vulnerability. There is one Lotus. That is not going to do the trick. This is going to be a slaughter on Israelite's part. Flipstep is going to be trying what they can, but they actually are starting to excess. They don't have enough production power to deal with 41 metal per second, while at the same time, Izzerite does have the production power. So while Flipstep has done a fine job harassing and defending and putting themselves in a decent position, Izzerite is no longer cowed. Flipstep's entire strategy depended on Izzerite being too scared to attack, and Izzerite decided, you know what? No. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight back because I have an economic advantage and have had for the entire game. I can just come in here with my giant army and wipe you out. And defend where need be with as little force as possible, which... Seems to be the idea, but at the same time, there is still going to be a bit of an assault over the back lines. What is being carried here? No, seriously, what is that? Is that, is that a rogue? What the heck are you? That is... Now, I really wish that UI would actually tell me what the heck things are carrying. Oops. Well, whatever. Not sure what it's carrying, considering the factors that have been built up. It's probably a rogue. But at the same time, more importantly, the rogues over from Izzeride coming in here and threatening the main base heavily, forcing Flipstep back, forcing Flipstep probably not be able to use that cheese strategy in the back, or that drop, not much cheese, but use that drop in the back, and the outlaws coming in here giving an advantage to Izzeride as they're able to surround Flipstep's forces effectively with the Felon providing a little bit more support. Unfortunately, the Vandals are starting to go down, but honestly, they're being more of a distraction. There's no air units to come in here to threaten and force the Vandals to be used in their own capacity as anti-air. 
which means right now, Izarai is just able to distract Flips of Forces while destroying them and wiping out the rest of the base here. If that factory goes down, that could be it. That could be the towel being thrown. Hard to say whether or not that's actually going to happen, but it does seem clear. At the same time, Outlaws are what was used. I didn't recognize the heat properly. Outlaws coming in the back line. Izarai losing their entire power infrastructure and a lot of their factory infrastructure. So it is possibly a base trade situation, and I do think that Izarai has the disadvantage on a base trade. I mean, they have a stronger army coming in here, and they could probably pivot that into the gunship. But at the same time, nothing is stopping these these outlaws. Or no, never mind. Something is stopping the outlaws. But the force coming in for Izrite is pushing forward. So while Izrite was heavily threatened and lost a lot of their energy infrastructure, they had enough energy infrastructure built up despite that wind farm being destroyed, that it is not going to be a problem. And at the same time, the Shieldbot factory for Flipstep has been wiped out. So Izrite, all they need to do right now is just hold on. They're at an advantage production-wise. They're at an advantage... Militarily, they're at an advantage economically, despite losing all of what they lost. I mean, still production-wise is better. And they turned into a scorpion. So it is going to still be game. This scorpion cannot really be stopped. One stinger is not gonna do it. Flip tip knows it, throws in the towel, and that is Ezeride pulling out a match that did not look especially strong. It looked strong at first, and then looked a little bit shaky afterwards, and then took off at the very end once Ezeride realized they had a lot more power than they thought they did. I don't know if they looked at attrition numbers, they looked at the arm, or looked at where they were in terms of income, but whatever it was, they figured out, yeah, they can just go. They can attack. As long as they're smart about it, which they were, it's fine. So yeah, he's a right, good job there. So that is going to be the first FFA. There's going to be another, or sorry, FFA, blah, it's the last one. First, 1v1. Next 1v1 is going to be between KDTM and North Shalane G on Wanderlust. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.